When you get into this wrecked motorcycle game, one thing about it, you're gonna have broken and bent parts. This was the state of the rear end of my Honda Sport bike when I received it and I worked to get it in a decent shape by removing these broken plates, installing new pieces, removing broken tail lights, and also of course dealing with the eBay fairings that don't match the original colors. That was my fault, I was being cheap, but hey, it ain't no working out. But with all of that done, and while the rear end does look better, I still have a problem to solve, the license plate mount. The original plan was to restore this one, bending it back in place, spray painting it, but I want to make one. I would start this project off by taking some measurements using my <laughs> cheap Harbor Freight digital calipers. And by cheap, this is probably why I'm going to have some issues later on that you're going to see. And they have work, but they would get the job done. I wouldn't need the ears on the license plate for the signal lights as I now have an integrated tail light on the CBR. And some people might say, why not just use this bracket? I could, again, bend it back and throw some paint on it, but what's the fun in that? I want to make one from nothing. After getting some measurements, I will be off to the CAD software Fusion 360 to design the first piece of the mount and send it to my new 3D printer, the Bamboo A1. If you're interested in Fusion 360, good news is it's free for hobbyists. So yeah, go check it out. 3D printing is a fantastic way of creating many different models in CAD software, and in my case, rapidly prototyping parts without the need of a third party. And it's cheaper, but of course you gotta design the stuff first. But once the part is done in Fusion, I can then export it to my printer software, check various settings, check clearances, decide what filament is gonna be in PLA or PETG, and also see how the part will be created and then send it off to the printer. After a few minutes of letting the printer just do its thing, I'd have the first piece to mount to the bike to get an idea on what I need to fix. Because it's not gonna be perfect the first time, or at least for me anyway. <laughs> it only took 30 minutes for my printer to make this. I designed this on my computer and a machine in a room in my house was able to print this out and I'm now able to put this on my motorcycle to test fit me. This is freaking incredible. What a time that we live in. I don't know if everybody's gonna be able to understand the excitement I have for this, but this is literally the beginning of fabrication. So I'm gonna put this on the bike, test my fitment. It's gonna be off, I know, but I can go back and tweak it and make it better. But holy crap, this is, this is amazing. So we got the first, I guess, piece of this, the license plate piece is not on here yet. But I can tell you like, this is tough, man. Like, I'm giving this a good tug. Now, this can be improved. Um, there is no um, reference for the angle that this takes. There's, you know, almost like a 90. That's not quite a 90, but there's an angle here that I didn't account for as well. So I'm going to see if I can kind of add a little bit of a fillet there. And then there's an angle here that contours with the bottom of this that I didn't account for as well. Um, you know, I didn't think, <laughs> I thought I could get that. But no, I need to uh, add a fillet to kind of take some of that out. Then this would kind of be able to push up against the bottom because right now there's space in here. But even though I'm pulling on this, man, I'm pulling on this pretty good. That thing's not going anywhere. But the screws are also not fully tightened either, but this is tough. I need to get better at making these angles. I wasn't really sure what this angle is. And so that's why I kind of just did it that way. But we can definitely save um, some material and I guess um, a length between here and the tire if I kind of make a cut there. And also maybe I need to make a little bit of more of a fillet there. But uh, it fits. It looks like it's straight. I like it. Having a printer like this, it allows me to make a piece or a template, again, quickly, learn from the mistakes, take measurements and tweak the design and then give it another go. But with a bit more info on what I needed to make it better, I went back into Fusion, made another piece to mock up against the bike again to see if I fixed my mistakes. 39 minutes and only took 21 grams of filament. Let me just take that. Thank you. But I think my measurements might be off a smidge still. I'm still learning the whole like measurement thing and kind of getting stuff lined up. 
but I made my original design off of that piece. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the screw hole, uh, maybe a cool like, maybe five millimeters in on both sides. And I think what that's gonna do, that's gonna allow this to sit straight up in there. After I tighten everything down, that gap, man, woo, it is a lot less, whoa. I don't know, man, I might, uh, that might actually be fine. One mistake I made is I did not completely tighten this thing down the first time, and I didn't do it the second time, and, it's, and it left more gap here than I thought. So you can see that angle, it contours that line pretty well. And on the other side, it's kind of the same thing. But I can tell you guys, this thing is on here. You're not gonna be pulling on this more than I am. <laughs> this thing is on here. Um, I think what I wanna do is maybe add a little bit more angle here so it can be tucked in even tighter. And, or maybe just shave some of this off, but I honestly think it's fine. But I think I may add one or two more millimeters here to make this thicker. And so when I put the other, uh, the plate piece on here, I have enough room to kind of bend this thing where I want it. So of course, I made more mistakes in the process. Again, we're learning how to engineer a solution. The part fits. I'm confident about it, so I then go to print the second half of the bracket which mounts the license plate. But keep in mind, I'm printing this part thin on purpose for time because the more complicated or thick the part is, the longer it's going to take to print. And also because anything thicker right now is a waste at this point. So of course, let's see how this goes. So this is the first time I've actually printed this part of the model. My measurements are off just a smidge. I must admit I am not the best that measurements I'm still learning um, but that hole lines up perfectly that hole lines up perfectly but somewhere I messed up something right here it is off by a smidge maybe I was 10 millimeters off in the opposite direction or maybe I just need to extend this out maybe I moved the hole but I didn't extend the piece out correctly but when it sits on there that piece is gonna go like that at this point I realized I had some issues in my original sketch design because I'm still kind of learning fusion at this point. When I print it, it may end up being like this because it'll be flat when it comes off of my printer. But I think I may want to angle it like that. I don't know, to kind of follow the shape or the, the lines of the bike a little bit more. I thought about like that too. That may even look silly. I may just print this man and this may, may be cool, but it still looks kind of not aggressive i feel like that flap going like that will give it more of that that angle that i want and then when it sits on there it'll be something like this i think yeah we're in the right place we're definitely in the right place so i had to go back to the drawing board take more measurements then i got back in fusion 360 and had one of these late night sessions where you're drinking coffee when you're not supposed to After getting another design ready, I would come up with this piece, which it does look similar, but it has, I'm talking millimeters of minor adjustments to make this work. This is the original piece, thicker material. We also have more material in the center. And after a quick adjustment, this piece is thinner, but we also took off the material in the center because we're not gonna need it. But once I make this piece thicker, will have uh, enough to make this you know, a quality piece. So after 
making that adjustment. Remember, we were off a little bit right here. I went back and looked somewhere I messed up and I was off by five millimeters. But now we are exactly where we need to be and it works. When we make this, it's gonna be about six millimeters thick, so it will be thick and it will be good enough uh, for me to apply some, some torque to once I actually tighten the plate down. But everything lines up. It's time to see if we can actually get a full model on the bike. After testing this mock-up piece of the full design, I then felt confident that I could print the whole thing and everything would be perfect. <laughs> that's, that's what I had in my head. But the result after letting the printer do its thing once again, after many times, this slick piece of plastic that really, to me, it does look aftermarket. Honestly, I'm proud of it. Even though I will find out very soon that I messed up the measurements again. From starting out with just printing this thin bracket and then printing the thicker bracket and then finally being somewhat comfortable with that, I moved on to printing the plate and then I printed a thinner piece because I realized I didn't need that much material. Then I went ahead and printed the whole thing and then I printed this piece on accident in blue, but the blue is really freaking sick. Um, kind of find out the holes did not line up like they were supposed to. And so um, I then end up printing the whole thing. Actually, no, I printed this before I printed this, okay? And then after I got the measurements correct, um, I then realized that the holes were off by like two millimeters. So I had to fix that. And then ultimately what started out as this, to design all of this, I came up with this final piece that fits perfectly. These are both the fully printed brackets, but you can see right there, the holes line up fine, but it's when you come to the other side, the holes weren't lining up. So that was a problem that I had to solve and it all came down to my measurements just not being correct in the beginning. Now I know what some of you are thinking. What about the license plate light? I could have designed that in, but the bike didn't come with one even though it should have came with one. So if I need one, I'll just kind of make it at some point. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just not gonna do nothing illegal. So yeah, we we, we just not gonna worry about that. Yep. Yep. That looks sweet, man. That is solid, I'm actually moving the bike. How strong is it? Well, this piece is very strong. Now this is a weak point. And also there's a weak point at this joint, but this is definitely stronger than the plate that it'll be holding on to. So I'm definitely confident that this isn't, <laughs> it's not gonna go anywhere. Now that I got the bracket fitting exactly how it's supposed to, the license plate mounts to it, I had one more trick up my sleeve that I felt that this would really seriously set this off. So I went back in Fusion, tweaked this part. I'm talking, this probably only took me like 10 minutes. This would really make this thing custom. All right, before we move forward, I gotta give a quick shout out to my folks that support me over on Patreon. We've built this little community within this big community. And being that we ain't sponsored over here, we gotta pay some of these bills somehow, right? But each individual person gets a nameplate on my wall. I've been building this thing out. If you're into that, I will leave a link down in the description. Let's get back to the video. All right, here we go. <laughs> Look at that. This is by far the coolest part about this a custom plate now i know it's not the right color for the cbr but imagine the bike being trailered or being inspected or if i ever get any of my bikes at a show this is not legal but it is still cool to have it on the bikes in this case the bike will be in the garage let's get this thing put on looking at this now i need a better mounting solution so i don't have to use zip ties because this isn't permanent but That is on there. That is so freaking cool, man. Even though the color doesn't match, this is so freaking cool. And it was so easy to make because I already had the shape. I literally just had to like emboss everything. 
This came out. I, I am I'm so over the moon about this, man. This so yes, I could have just bent the one that I had, cut the ears off, threw some spray paint on it, and called it a day. But making this part allows me to use this on multiple bikes, tweak the design, make it better, change the color of the plate. And I can say that I made this. Yeah, I re-engineered it off of something else, but this is truly just the beginning of my time with this software and with motorcycles. I got a lot more stuff in mind. And with that, I'm gonna say the license plate bracket, it is done. That was the original idea, but the nameplate at the end, that was a last minute thing. And it came out freaking amazing. And the cool part is I can use that on any other motorcycle. And also I can change the coloring, make it even more complicated. But for those of you out there that ride motorcycles and don't know anything about 3D printing and CAD, I hope you learned something, but this just, this is 1% of a bigger thing of what you can do with these printers. And especially in the motorcycle community, it's still kind of not really talked about, but I'm learning and I think it's a really cool thing. But there's still more work that I need to do to this bike. We're almost ready to say that this bike's done, but we gotta get more work done. So good news is you don't have to wait to see that. You can click right here and check that out and go to the next episode. But as always, again, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.